How's it going, Reef Builders? Jake Adams here. Welcome to another studio vlog. We have, we always have a special episode to put together, but today, got Evan up in the house. Hey. What's up, homie? Not much. Good to and be back. We are going to be bringing you the setup of one of the first large reef tanks here at the studio. Hope you guys really enjoyed the Christmas tree warm video. That thing came out really, really good. But we have a brand new Red Sea Reefer Peninsula here, and it's partially set up. And we are just sitting here contemplating what to do first and in what order. So let me uh, walk you around and show you what we have done completed so far, and then we'll figure out where to go from there. Really excited about this thing. So we've got a five foot Red Sea or a Reefer Peninsula here, all high clarity glass, rimless, a really slick setup. Got the built in overflow over here, totally ready to go for a reef tank. Up down in the sump here, we've got, so it's got this little bracket on top to put an auto top off on there, but we don't have that set up just yet. Um, filter sock holders, all that good stuff. The plumbing comes down over here. We don't yet have a return pump hooked up here just yet, but you'll see that soon. Um, the two drains that come down here, um, and then there's a couple other little sections for baffles and little sponges and stuff like that back in there as well. Okay, so. and then one of those drains is adjustable so we can dial it in. Correct, so you can down. get it nice and quiet, yep. So I know you guys are probably used to seeing a lot of videos where people build everything from the ground up, but putting together this stand really took quite a long time and leveling it on this atrocious floor Evan spent like, I don't know, a whole afternoon adjusting all the feet. <laughs> so if nice. you want to see how to put this stand together, watch some other channels. We already set up, we've kind of like started pre-arranging certain things. So we've got the brand new Maxspec 300 series. And coming around the side, we've got a few more things. Got a bag of red sea salt to get us started here. That's 200 gallons. Got my trusty John Land Minecom heater. Um, we have a brand new, uh, Delua Australia Great White Tent. So this one's rated for 250 gallons. As we know, that probably means it'd be perfect for 150 gallons. And then one thing we're a little bit on the fence about is the new Roller Mat Compact. This is a smaller version of the filter roll from Feeling. And um, we definitely want to use it on this aquarium. We're not exactly sure what's the best way to proceed about installing it in the sump. So what we're going to do to start is we're going to just get the tank running stock the way Red Sea intended, get it flowing, and we're going to keep uh, ruminating and thinking about what is the best, most effective way to install this in the sump. Last but not least, we have some very, very special lights. You may have seen these before. So the Acroptics light, man, I don't even remember what wattage these are. There's two two-foot fixtures. There's 11 colors of LEDs. It's Wi-Fi control, and there's an onboard uh, LCD display, full-color display, touch-sensitive here, so you can access some of the basic features. So I think the first thing we need to do is uh, fill her up, and then we're gonna shuttle some rock over here and start the aquascaping. So while Evan is filling up the tank, that's gonna take a little while. Um, one thing we did mention, I haven't selected a return pump for this tank yet. I don't know what pump I wanna use permanently, but I do have a small stash of pumps in the locker. So we're gonna go take a look at that and uh, see what might be the best fit. So let's see what we got in here. This is a controlled mess. All right, so there's the pump box. I so we have a barbed fitting on the return on this particular tank. So this one right here, I think it's the Vectra, what do they call this thing? Yeah, the V6. Um, that would be very easy to uh, attach to a hose. It's an AC pump, it's very powerful, good pressure. I've used this on a system before. Powerful pump, really good design. Um, Laguna motor block. Um, yeah, this will do the job, but definitely want to upgrade to controllable pumps because I want controllable everything for all the tanks. Before I put it on, I'm going to take it apart and make sure that it's clean. I try to clean all my equipment after it's done, but I'm going to um, put it in some fresh water, get it turned, make sure it's good. And then it should be no problem. Just connect the hose from this nipple to that barb. And as soon as the tank is full, we'll uh, add some salt. Oh yeah. 
Is it dirty? It's pretty dirty. Ooh. I thought that I had cleaned this pump before I stored it away, but we opened it up and it is filthy. It's way too filthy to clean mechanically. So what are we gonna do, Evan? We're gonna use a little muriatic acid. Acid bath, <laughs> acid wash, baby. Throw them all in this bucket here and uh, we'll get them soaking for a few. Yeah, and so for those of you that have never used powerful acids, first of all, kids never ever play with any kind of chemicals. Adults too, don't even think about it. May his rest be long and placid. That boy <laughs> added water to the acid. This boy did what the otter, he added acid to the water, right? So we're gonna fill that up with water first, yep. and then we're gonna add some acid. More, 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 more. Oh yeah, look at them fumes. Man, it is just so satisfying even to see like a half a foot of water. Holy cow, I am super duper excited. You know what we should do? So right now we have the pump uh, cleaning, the acid bath. Yep. So I think we should open up the skimmer and take a look at it. Let's do it. All right. Cool, so I've never unboxed one of these. I'm not sure how it comes. There's the body up there. So you can see you have a, a pipeless protein skimmer design. That just sits on there. You got a compression fitting to that cup. This is a, an Eden pump. So this is the same motor block that's used in the NIOS Quantum series of skimmer, the Eden pump. So um, an AC pump, super high performance. Man, it seems heavy for its size. Beefy. All right, man, let's get it set up. Yeah. Okay, now that you have the GW10 skimmer set up, tell us, uh, give us a quick rundown of the features. Yeah, so uh, it comes in here with water, and then it goes right up to this uh, fuser, I guess. The fuser plate is the really fuser different. Plate. Yeah. It has a bunch of holes that come out the, the sides of the diffuser. Yeah, I haven't seen one quite like that before. Yeah, it's pretty well, interesting. So most of the outlet holes are there on the sides, a little bit on top. And it seems like it'd be pretty easy to clean. You know, it's a pretty minim minimalist design, uh, which is a good thing. You know, I mean, take it apart, scrub it out, put it back together, and you're back in business. So it's got this little, uh, nice adjustment right here. This gate moves up and down to block or not block the outlet of the water. And then that will control the water level in the skimmer and how wet it's skimming or dry and how much you're getting out of the whole thing. And so. I really like this downflow spout right here just to send out the flow down. Exactly, yep. The bubbles even more. Yep. Cool, all right, well, we got the skimmer put together. Let's do something about that pump. Definitely. Ooh, let's see that shiny, pretty pump and power. Show us the inside right there. Practically brand new. The front. Oh, the front end. Yes, yes. Very important when you're using used equipment to make sure to service everything before you put it in. Absolutely. Right. Oh, I don't know if that skimmer is small or the sump is giant, but man, there's a lot of room. There's even room to put the skimmer in the pump chamber, and then there's this giant open section. You guys know I'm big on cable management, but there's no point in managing the cables until we figure out everything that's gonna go on this tank. And now we're pretty much just waiting for the water to reach the overflow. First drain, first water. Oh man, that's super exciting. Man, it's looking pretty good in here. Really, really nice. We've got it filled with water. We've got it salted it up. Uh, we've got it plumbed. We've got a pump on the return. We're not gonna aquascape it like for real and super. Uh, fully because the aquascaping is really when you have corals. I put down a foundation, you know, put down some base rocks and just kind of flesh out the uh, the aquascape of the tank and see where it leads us. So let's uh, let's get on that. I forgot to mention what kind of rock or which rock we're going to use. And if you've been following the studio vlogs uh, quite a bit, you know that I've had this tank set up with dry rock for two months or something. So this is dry rock, so used rock. Uh, that's been cured from all the funk that was grown on it before, at first in freshwater, now in seawater. It's gone through diatom blooms, but once we get this rock in the tank, it should be like more or less cycled. So I kind of regret not grabbing more base style rocks from Rob's house, because I only got the really, really good stuff, but I have corals to put on top of this rock. There's a lot of great rock in here. Definitely gonna go a little heavy on the lace rock, again for base, because I have a lot of caps and a lot of Monty's to put in this tank, so. 
It's been a couple days since we finished setting up the Red Sea Reefer Peninsula. It's um, looking really, really good. We got all the rock in there, everything is flowing. The water is really, really clear. And I've gone ahead and added just a few damselfish, really just to have a little splash of color and some life. And uh, not to cycle the tank, because this rock is kind of, it should be cycled already. But just because I really like those Azura damsels, they're blue and gold, they're pretty. And I wanted to have something to see in here, because I'm going to let it coast for a little while before I go to aquascaping it. And um, I realize that I actually haven't mentioned this, but this tank is going to be a concept aquarium as well. So the plan for the Red Sea Peninsula Reefer is to do an all Montipora tank. I am gonna include some Anacroporas as well, because they might as well be uh, Montipora. Um, and I've been collecting those colonies for a while. If you've seen my tours of the Coral Flat and things like that, there's a ton of different caps and encrusting Montes. And uh, so this is gonna be a tank specialized for Montipora which is why, at least that's my excuse why, the aquascape is uh, very unambitious. It looks cooler in real life, I promise, but you know, really, really didn't fill it up. This is only five feet long, and there's maybe like 70 pounds of rock, including a couple pieces of lace rock. We've got a nice big piece of shelf here, the big uh, uh, rock here that's gonna be cool to encrust with a big open area. This is where I plan to put all the branching digitata this is the next bomby, and we got a big chunk of Pukani here with a bunch of pores and holes. Um, nice, really crazy, gnarly piece of lace rock here that I'm going to be able to put a lot of prized and crusting Montipores as well. And this big open area is probably about 18 inches. That's going to be where the Capricornus is going to go. And uh, yeah, you know, it really doesn't. It really doesn't look like much right now. But I have a vision for how this tank is going to look, clustering the branching digitata, the plating modded caps, and the encrusting species of a Montipore. And I already have a bunch of those. And um, otherwise, underneath the sump, everything is looking pretty good. Still have a bunch of room. Working on dialing in the uh, Great White 10, that thing has got a ton of power. It's just creating a ton of foam. Skim, even though there's nothing to skim in here. And yeah, this is just a blank canvas as far as equipment is concerned. And the tank itself is yeah, somewhat of a blank, is somewhat of a blank canvas as well uh, for putting tomatis in there. So um, I know we don't have that much life going on yet, but I hope you enjoyed following along in the process. Be sure and check into another vlog very soon because I want to share with you some very special fish that I got. So thank you guys for tuning in and I will catch you on the next vlog.